What's poppin' people, it's King Douglas Seventh, and I'm back coming with some more Destiny 2 information. So I was looking on Reddit, right, and I saw something that said read only if you're worried about leaked Destiny 2 story. So I'm not worried about leaked Destiny 2 story. Actually I thrive on leaked Destiny 2 story. The thing about it is I want you guys to know about the leaked Destiny 2 story. Well, it's not really much leaked story, but this is more of a comparison on the content that Destiny 2 has to offer as compared to Destiny 1. So the guy goes on to say, all right, I've been translating some of what the Canadian dude who's behind the leaked guide has been posting on the forums. I posted about it in earlier in another thread, but I figure it would, be, it would get more eyes here. Here are the hard numbers about what's in the guide. I had to tighten up his grammar a bit because he doesn't give much of a F. So, it goes on to say this. There are 51 exotic items total. This excludes possibility, uh, the possibility of hidden exotics, for example, if one from the raids, and those like the Black Spindle, etc. So, it's talking about there are 51 exotic weapons, or not exotic weapons, but exotics in totals, and includes hidden, hidden exotics like Thorn and other weapons that you can get from doing raids. 18 exotic weapons, including or not actually I said that wrong not Thorn but like Mythic class but 18 exotic weapons including 16 new and 2 old ones that are being modified 11 exotic armors per class for a total of 33 so 7 to 8 for uh, 7 to 8 new per class and 3 to 4 old per class and no 3 of coins apparently there are 6 strikes so I said 5 before in an earlier video but there are actually going to be 6 strikes in Destiny 2, which is three more than in Destiny 1. One strike is going to be a PS4 strike exclusive. Um, armor mods obtained in Bright Ingrams uh, and through trading with Banshee 44. So Banshee 44 is making return. There are over a hundred legendary weapons to loot, not including armor, of course. So a hundred legendary weapons. And in this post down below, they say there are about 60 or eight. There are 68 or so. And vanilla destiny one um well so what I leave off 100 legendary weapons over 100 le legendary weapons and the guy to say six available strikes on the six but more to come so they're probably gonna add more strikes to the vanilla destiny 2 with updates Deej apparently has already said that they're gonna be 10 strikes about 17 main missions with a lot of plot in many cutscenes, way better than Destiny 1, with only like seven or eight missions in the main uh, in the main story, with maybe two cutscenes, 30-ish secondary missions plus world quests. Uh, there are about four world quests, each split with uh, there are four world quests with four missions for each quest, so about 16 total missions. And not that's not counting the main story missions and there is apparently a secret hidden mission that you need two keys in order to unlock so it seems like there are going to be a lot of a uh, a lot of content in destiny 2 as compared to the vanilla destiny 1 but wait we're not done yet so Again, on 3mglive.com, I cannot stress to you guys enough, this is where I get all of my news for video games and things like that from. If I'm not on Reddit, then I'm on 3mglive.com. I write for the website, but I'm not the only author there. There are a bunch of great authors there that make a bunch of great articles. But on 3mglive.com, let's switch this a little bit. Give me a second. So on ThumeGLive.com, right, we have a bunch of leaked exotic weapons. So let's just look through them. So in Kinetic Weapons, right, we have the Meta multi Tool, we have the Sturm, we have the Rat King, we have the Sweet Business, we have the Original Wing. Energy Weapons, we have Cold Heart, we have Heart Light, we have Fighting Line, we have Risk Runner, we have... Uh, Graviton Lance, we have Skyburner's Oath, we have Sunshot. Power Weapons, we have Darcy or D-A-R-C-I, we have Merciless, we have Legends of 
Acrius, we have the Prospector, we have Tractor Cannon, and we have the War Clip Coil. Exotic armor. So the exotic armors, I'm gonna have actually more details than the exotic weapons because uh, the exotic armors actually had descriptions next to them in the guide, and the descriptions were actually um, transcribed, I guess you could say, in the Reddit threads. So for the Titans, we have first we have the insurmountable skull board, a helmet, kills with arc melee ability, triggers health regeneration, and restore melee energy. Mask of the Quiet One, the helmet, grants ability energy when damaged and health regeneration when inflicting void damage. So, so far it seems like we're seeing a bunch of health regeneration and restoring to um, energy attacks. So, it seems like those two are trading back and forth, so it seems like the Titans are building more towards being tanky and having a bunch of survivability. survivability. ACD Zero Feedback Fence, which were actually in Destiny 1, Gloves. There are no details about what they are doing in Destiny 2, but in Destiny 1, they dealt damage and area of effect around you whenever you were hit by an enemy melee attack. Doom Fang Pauldron, Gloves. Shield Bash Melee Kills, Recharge Shield Throw. Melee Abilities Kill, Recharge Sentinel Shield Super. Uh, Synthroceps, Gloves. Increased Melee Lunge Range, Improved Damage when Surrounded. So that actually sounds pretty strong. I mean, all of these exotics sound strong, which is, of course, why, why they're exotics. But it seems like this one is going to be like Commando Pro in Call of Duty, where you're just going to lunge at somebody really quickly. And if there are a bunch of enemies surrounding you, like if you try to go 1v3 really quickly. And of course, Destiny is only going to be 4v4 now in multiplayer. Then you're going to be able to do a lot of damage in your melee. And also, it doesn't necessarily say if the melee only is improved damage or if you, all of your damage is improved while you're surrounded. So, Actium War Weight, Rig, Chest, Sally reloads a portion of your equipped auto rifles magazine from reserves. That sounds pretty dang good, so you don't really have to focus on reloading. Your mag will steadily reload if you wait. I wonder how much it reloads per like second. Crest of Alpha Loopy, also in Destiny 1, I'm pretty sure, generates an additional orb of light from supers and, and a healing pulse when barricade is active. Activated. That sounds pretty dang good. So if you have your barricade, I'm guessing that's the uh that's your ability, your third ability. Like that barricade that they put up that you could duck behind or just stand behind. If you have that barricade up, it'll have a healing pulse behind the barricade, and you'll also get an extra orb from your supers. That's going to be really good in raids. Hollow Fire Heart. Chest. Greatly improves the recharge rate of your solar abilities while Hammer of Soul is charged. Dune Marchers. Boots. Increase sprint speed. Sprinting builds up a static charge after melee attacking an enemy. That charge will chain damage to nearby enemies. Hmm. That sounds like it could be really, really useful. I guess. Like if you can... If it can prep during your shoulder charge so you can shoulder charge someone have that uh lightning change you go around everybody and then clean up everybody with your bullets that sounds like it could do a lot of damage lion rampant boots provides additional aerial ma uh, maneuverability peacekeeper boots reload stowed submachine guns and allows you to ready them instantly I wonder what that means. So you can, what do you mean allows you to ready them instantly? So do you just, does your submachine gun just automatically just warp in your hands? Like I really need to see what that's all about. All right, so Warlock exotic armors. Actually, I'm a Warlock myself, so I kind of want to say Warlock for last. So let's go to Hunter exotic armors. Celestial Nighthawk. Helmet modifies golden gun to fire a single shot, high damage shot, victims killed by the shot explode. That was in Destiny 1. Pro Tracer, Helmet, visually marks targeted enemies. Eh. Knucklehead Radar, Helmet, no details, but in Destiny 1, it left your radar visible while aiming down sight with primary kinetic weapons. So, so far, it seems like, just like in a vanilla Destiny 1, the Destiny 1 Hunter exotic armor does not seem too great. Uh, Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves, no details on that one. Yan Ahamkara Spine. No details, but in Destiny 1, it gave Sunslinger another trip mine. 
charged and cost place trip mines to last longer before despawning. Um, so the thing about that though is this was a pretty good thing until the trip mine got nerfed and it like just didn't kill anyone anymore because it trip mine was already hard to hit people with because it was the hardest grenade to stick with and then the one that like the explosion was delayed when people run by it and it was pretty visible so it's easy to see and shoot and then when they nerfed it, it didn't even one shot people anymore so that became kind of useless um the dragon shadow chest grants increased movement and weapon handling speed for a short time after dodging that sounds like it would be really useful in gunfights doesn't sound too useful in uh raids or anything like that though the lucky raspberry chest Increased the chaining capabilities of arc bolt grenade. Excuse me, and has a chance to recharge it each time it deals damage. That sounds. That sounds kind of good. It depends on how big the chance to recharge it is. Actually, ride in flux. Quick successive attacks with arc staff increases damage output and duration. That sounds like it'll be good during raids. Not necessarily during PvP because I'm assuming that your uh, arc staff char uh, attacks will one shot everybody anyway. Lucky pants, boots, increase hand cannon ready speed and initial accuracy. Orpheus rig provides ability energy for each enemy tether by shadow anchors. Uh, shadow shot anchors provides ability energy. I'd have to see. I don't, I'm not really sure exactly how ability energy comes into play, so I would have to see that in play to know how good that actually is. So, Stomp EE5. Increases sprint speed and slide distance, improves jump. So, just like in Destiny 1, I do not really like many of the uh, Hunter Exotic armors for the vanilla in Destiny 2. Hopefully they improve with that. Last but definitely not least, we're saving the best for last because that's what we do here. Let's see what the Warlocks get. So we're going to start off with Crown of the Tempest. Arc ability kills increase the recharge rate of your arc abilities. Already sounding pretty dang great. Eye of Another World. Highlights priority targets and improves the regeneration speed of your grenade, melee, and rift abilities. I'm wondering what a priority target would be though. Uh, Nazarak Sin Helmet. Void damage kills, uh, grant ability energy. Skull of Dara Ahamkara. I'm pretty sure that was in Destiny 1. Provides additional damage resistance during Nova Bomb. Nova Bomb kills, grant super energy. So, that sounds pretty good, like during raids if you're being swarmed, or just any missions if you're being swarmed, and you get a bunch of kills. With your Nova Bomb, you'll have that Nova Bomb up pretty quickly. And then if you get a bunch of kills, your teammates are probably going to get a lot of orbs from you. So you'll have your Nova Bomb up often if you have a Skull of uh, Dire Amkara. Karnstein Armlets. No details for those. Sun Bracers. No details. In Destiny 1 though, the Sun Breakers gloves granted a second solar grenade charge and a larger lasting solar grenades. So, um, I don't know. Me, personally, and in the beginning of Destiny, the solar grenades did a lot of damage because grenades that just sat there and just sat on the floor, people didn't know what they were, so they just stand in those grenades and they just end up dying. But as Destiny evolves and as people learn more about the grenades, those, like, solar grenades and the, uh, void grenade that just sat there, they didn't do as much damage. And it was more about the Axion bolts and all of those are the sticky grenades. Winter's Guile. Gloves. No detail for those. Starfire Protocol. No details, but in Destiny 1, it granted Sunsingers a second fusion grenade charge. Those were more useful in Destiny 1, specifically because uh, fusion grenades could kill in one hit. But because fusion grenades and grenades period are nerfed in Destiny 2, not sure how useful those would be. Wings of Sacred Dawn, chest, aiming down sights while airborne will hold you in place. Airborne kills reduce your grenade cooldowns. 
So that sounds cool and all, but the last thing place I want to be is just floating around in the air trying to kill people while there be people all, all on other places of the map killing me, shooting at me, trying to snipe me. And also, even if you're in a raid, the last place I want to be is just floating around in the air so every enemy can just shoot up at me. Not sure how useful that is. Lunification boots. No details there. And transversive steps. No details, but in Destiny 1, they granted faster movement speed while crouched and automatically reloaded your guns whenever you picked up the ammo that they used. That sounds pretty dang useful, to be honest with you. you like, anytime you can cut down the animation, like reloading, that's pretty dang useful. But, it seems like out of the winners and exotic armors, I feel like the Titans had the best exotic armors, and we don't know much about the exotic weapons that we've seen here so far. Seems like there's no Galahorn yet. Maybe Galahorn will be a hidden exotic or something like that. But as of now, no Galahorn. I would love to hear your opinions on which uh, subclass you think had the best or which class you think had the best exotic armors. What you think about if you guys have any information on the new exotic weapons, what you think the new exotic weapons are going to be like, who you think are going to have the new uh, best new exotic weapons. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on that. Skinned up 7 signing off. Peace, like, and subscribe.